Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at optionalpha.com and welcome back from the nice long weekend that we had. And we're gonna go over all of our opening and closing or adjusting trades today. Had quite a busy day and this actually is great to start off the week. I wanted to get a lot of orders uh, into the market and we're gonna go over two of the orders that we entered on Friday because we didn't send out alert uh, over the weekend I was traveling with family and then also cover all of the trades, both new opening orders and closing orders for Monday the 19th, which is today. So let's get right into those. I wanna go over the trades for Friday first. And the first one that we closed out of was our vertical credit spread in INTC. So we had originally sold in Intel a 2627 call spread against the market. So we wanted INTC or Intel to go lower as we head into May expiration. Now, for those of you who have been with us for about a month, you'll remember that we sold this for about 30 cents and then we rolled it to June as we neared expiration to give ourselves a little bit more time to see if this thing might work or not. And as we rolled it to expiration in June, we paid no money on the roll. So we still kept that 30 cent credit that we had, except for commissions to roll it out to June. Now on Friday, we just decided to close back this spread because we actually got a good move down on the market on Friday for Intel and just Really, this thing has just kind of dragged on for the last month and a half, and we think that there's going to be a little bit better use of our money elsewhere. And I definitely think that the market in general could be setting up for a little bit of a rally here as we head into June and July. So with that, we closed it out at the 30 cent debit that we had originally sold. So we made no profit on this. It was basically a scratch except for commissions all around, probably lost a little bit of money on commissions. So that was our closing out trade in Intel. Now, two other trades that we close out today. The first one is Yelp. So we close out of Yelp really because, and I got a lot of emails about this and kind of was odd because those of you who have been following along, and I know we've got a ton of new people over the weekend. We had so many new people join over the weekend. Um, so it's probably a lot of newbies that are out there. But the reason that we closed out of Yelp so early in the process, because we do have all the way until June expiration, is because we made just about 60% of our max potential gain, or a little over 50% of our max potential gain in Yelp in just about 10 days. So we actually entered this spread about 10 days ago. It still has all the way through June expiration, but we had originally sold the 50, 45 put spread for $1.60. So in just two of these verticals that we originally sold, we made $120 in 10 days. Now, again, for those of you who are new, what we try to do with a lot of these spreads that we're selling is close them out at about 50% of their max potential gain. So if we take that spread and say that it's about 120, then we like to close it out for, or I'm sorry, about 160, then we like to close it out for about half of that amount. So once we make about half of 160, then we can close it out. And you'll notice that we made a good deal of that, you know, a good chunk of that money right up front in the last 10 days. So at this point, I think it's just best to close out the trade and roll on over to the next trade. Now, if we actually take a look at Yelp to take it, and this is Intel, but if we actually look at Yelp and what the thing did to make this thing profitable, we had two things working in our favor. One, the stock rallied and the stock had a big, big rally today. It was up almost 5%. So that obviously helped because we were short the put spread below the market. But in addition to that, implied volatility has finally started to crash. Now remember, when we sold this thing, kind of at the bottom, at the low of the market, I believe that we sold it almost here, or very near the low, implied volatility was up above the 50th percentile. So we got the implied volatility move that we wanted, we got the directional move that we wanted in the stock. So again, don't take a huge amount of risk, assuming that the rest of this month, all the way till June expiration, which is right here, that the stock is going to stay above this level. And it may very well, very may, may well stay above that level, but I don't want to take any chances. We made a good chunk of money right here in the last 10 days. It's prudent to take this trade off and move on. Now, the next trade that we took off today, and I'm sorry for the confusion on the alert. One alert went sent out said that it was an opening trade, but this was a closing trade. We closed out of the queues that we had for June, which was the 84.63, 83.63 put spread that we had originally sold for 25 cents. We bought it back today for 15 cents. Took in a nice $10 profit. The reason that we took this trade off is because we had a lot of these on. So even though it was a nice, a small profit on the individual spread, we actually took in a nice gain, about $80 on the overall position. Now again, don't get confused with some of these strike prices. Remember that the queues had a dividend 
that happened. So all of the strike prices for the queues are adjusted by a couple cents. So all of the strike prices, and they've added some more in here recently, but most of them are 84.63, 83.63, whatever the case is. You can basically ignore that 0.63 for all intents and purposes and just look at a simple spread of a dollar wide. That's what we traded is a $1 wide spread on the queues. We had originally sold it for about 25 cents. And again, the same thing pretty much happened with the queues that happened with Yelp. And that is that the market rallied and implied volatility dropped. So we got both things that we wanted to happen, happen right away for us with the queues. The market went up, implied volatility started to drop up here. So it went down to 28%. We sold these things when the market was about, uh, I think it was over 55 in the 55th percentile. So it was about 55% for the queue. So got a really good move and that's exactly what we wanted. So there's no point in holding out another 36 days or so for another 15 cents in move. We got vast majority of the move that we wanted to see very quickly. So again, prudent to just exit the trade. All right, so let's go up and talk about some of the opening orders. Now for Friday, we had originally sold on Friday and this is our Friday trade in ZNGA um, and that's Zenga. So what we did here is sold a wide or at least for this stock, because it's a three, four dollar stock, sold a wide call spread for about 30 cents. Now, I got a lot of emails about this on Friday and tried to, again, push everyone to the membership side of our blog here so that you guys can add comments there versus email. But a lot of the comments and questions I got was, Kirk, why did you sell this spread so close to the market? And the reason that we did that, and I'll go into the pricing here in a second, the reason that we had to do that is because we wanted to get a good credit. Now, some of the strikes that we have for Zenga are a little bit close. So they're the three and a half, the three, the four, the four and a half strikes. So because that we have these odd strikes because the price of the stock is so low, I actually had to get a little bit closer on our first strike, which is the three, three dollar strike to actually get this nice credit that we wanted to see. So if we add our three dollar strike to our credit received, which is 30 cents, that moves our break even up to about 330 for the stock. And I just don't think it's going to go anywhere. It's really had a really, really tough couple of last months and the stock is just on the way down. And I think that even though we might get a small bounce here in the last couple of days, I really think this thing is under a lot of selling pressure. The stock continues to lose money. The company continues to lose money. Um, and it's really, really just going to be a, a one-off spin here, I think, uh, from Facebook and stuff like that, which is continuing to move lower. So uh, at least at that point, I think that the stock can continue lower. But again, if I go into the trade tab, you guys can see some of these, these strikes here. You'll see that even for the strikes that we have right now, that there are these odd strikes, so like the two and a half, the three and a half, the four and a half, and there just wasn't a lot of movement in the strikes that are further out. So you can see that these are very lightly priced, so the pricing isn't too great on these. They're highly liquid. There's a lot of open interest, a lot of volume for these trading, so they're very easy to get in and out of but the pricing just as far as total dollar amount isn't like some of the other stocks that we trade. So the premium just isn't there, but they are highly liquid, very tight bid ass spread. So it's not that it's a bad trade. It's just we had to adjust it and kind of make it work for us. So it was a small position, so it's not a huge thing. We moved in closer to the market, but we did keep our risk size small because of that, only trading three contracts. All right, so moving on to trades that we opened and entered today. Well, we got back into Pandora and we went ahead and sold the 20, 21 put spread in Pandora. Took a nice credit of 23 cents on this one. I'm going to go to the pricing chart so you guys can take a look at this now and just take a look at where we actually entered our strikes and what our probability of profit is. But again, a lot of emails about this and I know it's because we have so many new people that joined over the weekend. But a lot of people said, Kirk, you know, you had a losing trade in Pandora last month on the Iron Condor around earnings why now get back into Pandora? And the simple answer is because we want to trade a lot in this stock. We are in really a lot of stocks. We want to trade a lot in these stocks that have high implied volatility that we can sell premium in because we're trading 70, 80% probability of success. And what that means is that we are going to lose two out of eight times or three out of seven times. But we can only make those probabilities work in our favor if we continue to be diligent and systematic about trading and making that same trade, that high probability trade, month after month after month. So don't get scared away if you make a losing trade. I mean, Lord knows there's a ton of losing trades you're going to make over your career. And it's the traders who consistently make these high probability trades knowing that over time they make the same high probability trade over and over and over again that the numbers are going to work themselves out long term. So that's exactly what we're doing here in Pandora. 
we went ahead and sold the July 2120 put spread for 23 cents in credit. We'll go to the chart here so you guys can take a look at Pandora. Again, even after earnings, Pandora's implied volatility continues to be really, really high. It's up in the 56th percentile, and we had a good move up in the stock today. So at least this is kind of a hedge against this whole Zenga and Facebook and everything. We're kind of playing both sides of the market. So we have these internet stocks that are continuing to move lower. Pandora is obviously no exception to that. The chart looks very similar to Zenga. And if the stock continues to move lower, then Zenga will make money. And if Pandora moves higher, uh, then Pandora will move higher and Zenga will lose money, whatever the case is. But we're just going to be diligent about when we pick our exits in this, obviously, uh, and make our trades work for us. Now, if we go to the actual pricing tab here of Pandora, and you can see we're already up about 20 bucks on the day, which is not a bad move in the stock uh, for one day. But if we go to July and move out, so we're trading about 60 days out, you'll notice that we're trading at about the 70th or the 70 percentile as far as probability of success. So our first strike is at 21, and our next strike down that we bought is at 20. So 21 is really the line in the sand that I consider as the first line of defense if the stock continues to move lower, that's where we really start losing money at expirations around 21. So if we look here, our probability of being out of the money, meaning that the probability Pandora does not move down and close below 21 by expiration is about 70%. So we're trading just about 70% odds of success, about a 30% chance of this stock moving all the way down and closing below 21. Now that's a little overinflated, I think, because implied volatility is high. So as soon as implied volatility dries up, I think those percentages go way, way, way higher, and this becomes more of an 80% chance of success trade. Now again, there's just a lot of activity today in the volume, so who knows if that was a lot of option alpha people that were trading today. Uh, that would be really cool if there was a lot of us in the market in trading today. But it was a really good trade. I feel good about this trade, and we'll obviously keep watching it and monitoring it. All right, so some diff different trades that we made here today. Pandora, or, I'm sorry, moving on past Pandora. We traded a calendar spread in Facebook. Now, for those of you who don't know what a calendar spread is, obviously check out some of the video tutorials we have right here on Option Alpha. But what we did on our calendar for Facebook is we actually went ahead and are a little bit bullish on Facebook, thinking that we might see a move up in the stock as we get towards the end of June. So we're dealing only with the 62 and a half calls. But what we do with the calendar is we sell the front month so in this case, we sold the June options, the 62 and a half call, and we bought the same strike, but out in July. So we buy the long month or the back month option. Now the benefit to doing this is that you're doing it only when implied volatility is low, like we talk about in our strategy guide on the platform. But you're doing this only when implied volatility is low, assuming that implied volatility goes higher. So as the stock rallies, and if implied volatility rallies along with it, then the back month options that we are long are going to benefit more than we will get hurt on the front month options we are short. So again, the back month options, which are July, will benefit greater than we will get hurt on the short month on the front month options that we are short in June. So all dealing with the same strike, 62 and a half calls, long the July options, which are back month about 60 days out, and short the June options which are about 30 days out or so. So if we actually go to the chart here, I just want to visually show you guys where our trade is on the chart here, or where we're focusing our effort on Facebook. So here's a look at Facebook. The 62 and a half price point, this is really where we want the stock to kind of settle at expiration, is right in this range here. And you see we have a little bit of time, so we've got some time to work in our favor, and this thing will obviously expand in profit if it takes the entire time to get there and just kind of slowly grinds higher, which is ideal with calendar spreads. Now, the mistake that some people make with calendar spreads in particular is that they trade so far out of the money that they don't make it worthwhile. So it's gotta be a reasonable move for the stock to make. Now, this trade up here, like for example, if you traded the 70 calendar spread instead of the 62 and a half, this trade up here will be a lot cheaper and will have a higher potential profit but your probability of success is gonna be lower. And that's why it actually costs less to get into a 70 calendar spread than it does a 62 and a half. But what's the likelihood that Facebook rallies all the way back up 
to 70 between now and June expiration, right? Probably not as high as at least rallying to 62 and a half. So that's the reason why you want to kind of trade these just slightly out of the money or even at the money in some cases, just so that you get a good move in the stock, but it's not an unreasonable move for the stock to make. Now, if we go over to the Analyze tab here on our platform and just type in Facebook, you can see where our actual strikes are for Facebook. And let me see if we can get this. Oh, sorry. Let me just get the right calls here. And you'll notice this is our position for Facebook as we head into expiration. So you'll notice it has this nice sweeping calendar profit loss diagram that we usually look at here. And everything is really centered around 62 and a half, which is really where the calendar spread peaks. So the ideal situation is Facebook moves up to 62 and a half and basically sits there all the way through June expiration. Now you see that Facebook is actually trading at 51, I'm sorry, 59.21. So we're already in the money and we can make money right away on this trade if Facebook starts to slowly grind higher. Now this is another benefit of just trading a calendar spread just slightly out of the money or even at the money is that you actually have the potential to profit even if the stock moves a very makes a very slight move higher between now and expiration. So we ideally want Facebook to go up to 62.5. But even if the stock moves a very slight move up to even say $60 or so in stock price, we could actually get out of this trade and take a profit on the trade uh, before expiration. So a lot of information there on Facebook. Now that kind of dovetails into our next trade, which is a diagonal. So we actually haven't done a put diagonal on the blog here in a long time. So I want to kind of go over this in detail. A lot of people get confused again with diagonals, but think about it this way. A diagonal is two things. It's a directional spread and it's a calendar. So you have the embedded calendar factor. So just like we talked about with Facebook where we were long the back month options and short the June month options, we're doing the exact same thing here with TLT. So this is bonds. We have a diagonal going in bonds. We have the same thing going with bonds and TLT is that we're long the July options and short the June options. But in addition to doing that, we're not just trading a single strike like the 62 and a half calls. In this case, we are trading two different strikes. So we're doing an 11, a 111, 110 debit put spread, but then calendarizing it by doing it at different contract months, so July and June. So think about it this way. If you break it down, you're still directionally short bonds. So we want the 111, 110 that is moving that we want the stock to go lower, we want the ETF to go lower, so we're kind of betting against bonds right now. But in addition to that, we know that if implied volatility rises in bonds as it moves lower, then we want to profit off of that as well. So we're trading this diagonal and it acts very much like a debit put spread, except it has that calendar feature inside of it. So again, we are long the July 11 options, 111 options, and short the June 110 put options. All of that came out to a debit of 83 cents. So we'll go over this both on the chart and on the Analyze tab. So here's a look at the Analyze tab for the TLT trade. And you can see it looks very similar to what usually is just a regular put credit spread, right? That would be our profit loss line for a regular put credit spread. And instead, what happens is, is that it has this kind of calendar peak where it kind of rallies up to and right around 110. So again, if the stock closes at 110 at June expiration, that's obviously ideal, but we're short those June options, so that's where we make the most amount of money. But by doing the spread and diagonalizing it, having the 110 and the 111 put, then we actually have more of a potential profit zone on the lower side. So you can see we actually make money anywhere below where the stock is trading right now. So if bonds trade, anywhere below where they are right now in their huge rally, and we'll show you that on the chart, then we make money at June expiration for this diagonal. So it's a little bit more of an interesting trade, a little bit more of an advanced trade. So I do not suggest you do this trade if you're brand new to Option Alpha and brand new to our system. You want to get yourself or you get your feet wet with some of the regular spreads first before you get into diagonals. But here's a look at where TLT and bonds are in general. And notice that we've had just a monster run up in bonds. And this is one of those trades that we try to get into on Friday last week, just didn't have a chance to get into it. And finally, bonds have already started to collapse down. We've already started to make money on this trade because we entered it earlier in the day. But ideally, what we want to see is we want to see continued movement in low, lower in bonds all the way through June expiration, which is right here. So that's what we want to see. We want to see 
a massive, massive move lower in bonds, which we could easily get very quickly uh, if the market continues to sell off as much as it did today. Now, in addition to the move lower, obviously we're playing a high implied volatility. So if implied volatility rallies up higher, say up to the 50th percentile or the 60th percentile, then that would really help our position kind of expand our profit. Now, we want to sell this thing back for higher than we paid in debit. So that's what we want. We want the stock to go down and we want implied volatility to go higher. All right, so let's cover the last trade. And this trade got in right before the close. So if you did not get a chance to enter this, because I know that some text alerts did not get out to some people on the West Coast before the market actually closed, go ahead and try to enter it tomorrow at or very close to the same price. And that was our just regular debit put spread in EMC. So it's kind of funny, but we've actually kind of bracketed this TLT diagonal with a calendar, which basically is what it is. It's a calendar and a debit put spread. And that's what creates a diagonal spread. So with this EMC, we traded the 27, 26 puts. We bought it a little over market price, mid price at 55 cents. Ideally, what we just wanna see happen is EMC continue lower. The stock has very, very low implied volatility. It's around the seventh percentile. So you can see IV is really, really low. So there's nothing in here that we're gonna sell as far as cred spreads or iron condors or strangles or straddles. And if you look at the stock, it's just been on a huge, huge winning streak but running into some major, major area of gapping resistance that it had in the past. So if we have the stock rallying up as much as it did, and then it runs into this wall of just massive gap resistance, we could see a quick down move in the stock, which is really what we're playing. It's more of a directional play. Implied volatility would be great, but this is more of a directional play. The stock has been up five, six or seven days in a row, straight higher. So I just think that it's kind of overgone or overblown its rally here. And we could see at least a couple days of downside movement in the stock, very similar to what we saw in some of the other things that we've traded before uh, over the year. Once we usually see some of these stocks that have just four or five, six, seven, eight days of continued green and just moves higher, then we know that at some point the market has to be a little bit more cyclical and average and crush the stock back down. People are gonna start taking profits on this and the stock will continue to move down. So that's at least our hope for the EMC trade. So we want to see a good move down in the stock very quickly. I'm assuming that we'll probably be out of this trade in a couple days and take a very small profit on it, but it's just a directional play to keep ourselves active in the market. So as always, I hope you guys really enjoy these videos. As always, add your comments or questions right below this video. I'll get back to all of those either tonight or tomorrow before the open and happy trading.